Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is James O'Halloran and I'd like to introduce you to a few of the highlights of our sale of Important Irish Art, which takes place on Wednesday the 8th of December at 6pm. It's a live online auction. We have people in the room, but you can also uh, bid online on various platforms, including Adam's Live, uh, but also by telephone and commission bid. So the first picture that I'd like to uh, talk to you about today is this wonderful large work by William John Leach, and it's entitled Grey Bridge Regents Park. And it's one of a series of paintings that Leach painted from the period around about 1935 for about 15 years. And they come in all sorts of sizes, but there's a fundamental um, theme that runs through them, and it's the impact of uh, reflections and light on this particular section of Regent's Park. He painted them more or less at a time when he couldn't travel um, as readily to, uh, to Europe and to France in particular. And what's wonderful about these pictures is that there's quite a high horizon line, as you can see. There's the bridge running across and it's through the, the, uh, uh, the weeping willows that are here at the edge of the water. But it's this wonderful treatment of the reflection and the light on the water. And that's what makes this picture so special. So the um, next, the next uh, picture we have here is the first of three Paul Henrys that we have in the auction. And it's a West of Ireland bog, uh, bogland scene um, with the cottages and turf stacks. And as you can see, it's a lovely, bright, breezy day in the West of Ireland. Um, what's superb about it is the treatment of the clouds, almost as if they're scudding across the sky and there's wonderful blue mountains. Um, painted in the mid-1920s, now of course Paul Henry had left Ackle around about 1919, but the theme of the West of Ireland landscape is uh, carried on throughout his career. But what's lovely about this is the sense of human habitation represented by the four cottages and the turf stacks. Um, of course, there's no uh, sign of uh, actual humans in this, um, but there is a sense of their existence, which is uh, uh, a nice feature of this picture. It's painted on canvas. Um, and that picture is estimated at 140 to 180,000. Next picture here is a lovely little work by Jack Butler Gates, and it's called Through the Street to the Hills. And it's painted on panel. It's quite late, it was painted in 1950. Um, and it represents a, a view Quite close to, to here, um, it's on Fitzwilliam Street, uh, where Jack Yates lived from 1919 onwards. Um, and you can see there's a couple of figures here striding along the street, and they're passing the Georgian houses and this lovely blast of sunlight coming through between the houses. Uh, and off in the distance, you can see Leeson Street, and then beyond the houses on Leeson Street, there's the view to the mountains, which you can still see to this day. Estimate on that picture is 100 to 150,000. Next one here is a magnificent work by Sir William Orpen, and it's a work it's a, entitled Anita Bartle, uh, The Red Shawl. And it's an interesting picture in the sense that he painted a very similar work uh, of Anita wearing a similar red um, gown, which is currently now in the Tate. Uh, gallery in London and Anita was uh, well known to to Warpen. She was in the sort of the literary and uh, artistic circle at that time and um, this picture was as I say painted around the same time as the other one that's in the Tate which had been given to Anita as a wedding present. So again the scale of that picture is magnificent. Estimate on that is 30 to 50,000. So the next Paul Henry we have is another lovely little picture from the west of Ireland and it is also painted on canvas, um, very subtle colours, there's a lovely sort of uh, treatment of the, uh, the, the pink clouds, uh, very lightly coloured pink clouds. Uh, but again, what's, what's wonderful about it is that the way the artist has uh, put in these uh, turf mounds or turf reeks 
uh, on the edge of the, um, the, 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 the lakes, again, representing the sort of the human context. Um, so what's, what's, what's lovely is that despite the fact that it is a very uh, remote uh, landscape, it does have that nice sense of the human context. Whereas this Paul Henry, which is the bigger one of the three, and again, probably painted in the late 1920s, uh, we think probably somewhere around about 1927, 28, and it is a pure landscape. There is no reference whatsoever to human habitation. And again, it's got this wonderful big billowing cumulus clouds and the wonderful blue mountains. And again, the subtlety in the way that the blues are painted and Paul Henry's brilliant use of uh, very light brush strokes and um, you know the, the, the just slight difference in tone gives this lovely sense of modeling uh, that you see in the, in the treatment of, of the mountains. And again this nice little bit of uh, reflection there in the water where you can see the sort of the reflection of the, um, the clouds. And again balanced of course here inevitably by a little bit of foreshore with, with, the, with the rocks. Uh, this picture is estimated at 70 to 100,000. And then finally for this uh, section is a work by Patrick Swift and it's a portrait of um, Lucian Freud who is one of the great titans of modern British painting and Swift and Freud were friends and Swift uh, had a studio where he also lived on Hat Street here in Dublin. Uh, again, not that far away from Stephen's Green here. And um, Freud was a regular visitor to Ireland in the late 1940s and stayed with Patrick Swift. They would have been well aware of one another's work um, in many ways, I suppose. Freud had achieved uh, more notoriety having had several uh, solo shows in London before coming to, to, to Dublin and Swift had had his first solo show at the Victor Waddington Galleries but you can see this beautiful treatment of this sort of say, somewhat realistic um, treatment of the portrait and of course both Freud and Swift were very keen on uh, portraiture but there's this lovely context of the, uh, the, 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 the window uh, where Freud is painted against the drapes and the blinds. And you can see just beyond here the sort of the wrought iron uh, work from the railings outside on the street. And then closer uh, to us are these, the, the, the treatment of the two tumblers and also the potted plant. And this kind of thing sort of turns up in both artists' work. Um, and that, as I say, is, it was painted around about sort of 1950 or so. Um, and this picture has never been exhibited and it has come to us from the artist's family. Uh, the estimate on it is 20 to 30,000. And it's painted on canvas and you can see here in the corner uh, that it is signed by the, uh, the painter. So a very rare and important work um, and one that uh, should excite uh, collectors of both modern British and modern Irish painting.